Now we come to the testimony time, and uh, our two candidates this morning are going to read their testimonies to you. We've actually put out some of these sheets so that if, you, if they get a bit nervous, at least you can actually follow it and you know what they're saying. Okay, so if I burst into tears, you know what? I'm, no, I haven't given you my sermon notes. Okay, but first of all, I'm going to invite uh, Gertrude to come forward. Gertrude Nkomo. Um, Gertrude's been around the church for quite a while now, and I was trying to think about what I could say about each of the candidates. Well, Gertrude's pretty special anyway, um, and Eve's, of course, she's great. But um, I wanted to share this with you. One night, I went to pick them up for the baptismal class, and uh, I'd phoned up and said, oh, I'll, I'll be home. She works very hard and long, odd hours, you know, and uh, she said, I'll be home at such and such a time. Could you pick me up? Yeah, no problem. So, so I'm going to bring Eve. That's fine. So when I went to pick them up, the pair of them came out in their pajamas and a dressing gown. <laughs> <laughs> and it was great. When we arrived there full of nailings, and Phil said, oh, you're in your jammies. And it was quite normal. And I thought, you know, this is just how it should be in a family, isn't it? You know, you don't have to get dressed up. You don't have to perform or express some kind of image. You just have to be yourself. And so there we were. I just, in fact, I'd almost said I'm going to get a onesie, and didn't we? We wouldn't have turned up one. We should have done that. Plus, our next baptismal service is going to be onesies. I don't know. But, you know... But the fact is, we should be able to sit round and study God's word, even in our pyjamas. Isn't it great that we've got a fellowship together? So Gertrude's going to read her testimony. It's there for you. Okay. You don't have to be nervous. Just don't look at them. Okay. Okay. Come on, stand with you. Here we are. Praise the Lord. Um, my name is Gertrude Nkomo. <coughs> I grew up in a Christian family and went to church every day. When I was young, I thought it was just a routine to go to church. Although I knew it was, although I knew that Jesus is my savior and had my faith, I still walked in the wrong path. This was because I had wrong friends around me that made me think they matter more than God himself. The past few years have been an eye opener for me. God has showed me different facets of life. He has helped me make new relationships as well as giving me the courage to step back from some relationships. I've been fortunate enough to be given the opportunity to serve the Lord again. I have my family in Christ that I worship with on the phone every day and that has drawn me closer to him. The list is endless of what my Savior has done. I could go on and on about the things God has done for me. God has done and shown me in the past few years. Today I'm born again, and I want to thank my God, my Savior, for yet another opportunity to save him again. Amen. See, it wasn't as bad as all that, was it? All right, fantastic. Let me just give you a bit of context there. Gertrude is in constant contact with Africa, and so in her home, and she has a fellowship there, and, and some good people who mentor her. Um, and one lady, what's that lady's name that found you, and you talked to her about fasting and things like that? A friend of yours, you phone her regular. What's her name? Uh, patience. Yeah, Patience, her name is. And uh, she has got a lot of patience. And I tell you, I've, I've learned a lot about fasting over the last few weeks as well. So there you go. So then, then we're going to turn to Phil. Well, you know, one of the great things uh, about Christian fellowship, and this happened again just recently, um, certainly as you come as a new pastor to a place, <laughs> is that you begin to realize the work that God has been doing in the fellowship over a long time. Um, now, Phil is one of those people that folk have been praying for for an awful long time. We've got another two sitting there as well. We're praying for for a long time. And then the time is right, and it comes to fruition, and it's always a great privilege to be a part of that. And so I'm going to ask Phil to come and tell his story. Thanks, Phil. Good morning. Um, great to see everybody. Um, sounds a bit war and peace, this, to be honest with you. So, I've, uh, honestly, I'm not that interesting. So, um, this is my testimony. I've been coming to Beacon Loft now for more than 10 years. And to be honest, the first few years, like a lot of people, um, you are looking for that bolt of light. You were looking for something to really confirm that I was actually in the right place. So yeah, we know that not everybody gets that bolt of light. And my journey to salvation started well before I started coming to Beacon Loft. I was born in Wald's End, and for the most part of my early years, I was brought up in Kilnworth by my loving parents, uh, Dick and Lena. Who, who I'm absolutely delighted to see that they're, they're with us today. So uh, hi, and great to see you. I've always believed there was a God, and, and Jesus is wonderful son. And as a youngster, 
I couldn't wait for the biblical movies to come on over the Christmas and Easter holiday periods. But I didn't attend church on a regular basis. And like most people, I think I fell into the trap of believing, but just doing nothing about it. Nothing to progress that belief or faith. I married my first wife, Karen, in August 1981, and six years later gave birth to a beautiful daughter, Carly, who's working actually down in London at the moment, who unfortunately can't be here. My wife, unfortunately, passed away in February 2002, only seven weeks after being diagnosed with leukaemia. Now, at that time, I didn't have God in my life, and I obviously asked the question on, on, on more than one occasion. If there was a God, why would he have taken somebody so fantastic, amazing, um, at such an early age? Now, the one thing I'll never, ever forget about Karen and take a huge amount of comfort from is how much she believed. Um, she prayed every night and without fail for her family, her friends, and I'd often say, I hope you've remembered yourself. Mm-hmm. I was then fortunate and lucky when there wasn't any of those things, none of those. It was God who brought Aileen into my life. So for so many reasons, Aileen was still grieving like me. And as she'd recently lost her loved one, her husband David had died suddenly of a heart disease, um, taken again at such an early age. Now, it was no fluke or no coincidence that we found each other. And we all know that it's somebody's big hand was involved in that. I could be here all day telling you how perfect Alien is for me to see how happy, I'm, uh, happy I am at the moment. It's pretty much an understatement. So she's there, and thank you again. <laughs> In stark contrast to myself, Aileen had been brought up with the Christian church and she's told me so many stories about her fantastic weekends away with a youth fellowship. It was Aileen who introduced me to Beacon Loft and from day one I've been welcomed with open arms by the wonderfully warm people at this church. Even though it was obvious I didn't attend church and had read very little of the Lord's book. So what's happened to bring me here today? Well, the Lord has sent me so many signs, not via that bolt of lightning, but I know he's been with me. And he's quite simply opened my heart to what he has to offer. I've asked God to forgive my sins, and through my baptism today, I'm, I'm ready to commit my life to Jesus Christ. Right then. Okay. Um, Right, remember what I said, this is simply representing a grave. Actually, someone is going to be buried here today. But they're going to come to life again. And this is what, remember when Jesus died and was rose again from the dead. And this is what happens when folk are baptised. It's a symbol that they're dying to their old life and they're coming to new life in Christ. And what's going to happen is I'm going to ask them a few questions. And once they've made their responses to that questions, we're going to baptise them. And as they come out of the water, we're going to sing, Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Is that one we got, Ian? We got happy day? Yeah, let's go for happy day. Happy day, happy day. <laughs> yeah. um, well, and, you know, we all know that one. And then um, as they come out of the water, it gives us a chance to pray with them. Um, and then we'll take them out of the water. I want to give them a scripture. So our first candidate is um, Gertrude and Coma. Okay. Got a swimming hat on as well. <laughs> okay. Now the responses to the questions are dead easy. It's just, it's I do. Well, if I say I do you, if I say do you, it's I do, and if um, are you, I am. Okay, dead easy. I can you put your hands up in front of you. Okay. Sorry? Oh, sorry, wrong way around. <laughs> for the filming, for the filming, okay. Hold your hand up nice and high, that's it. So, you're filming, okay. Gertrude, do you believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? I do. Do you repent of your sins and put your life into God's hands? I do. And are you willing, with God's help, to follow the path of Christian service? Wherever that might lead you. Yeah. On your profession of faith and repentance towards God, we now baptise you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs>
Now, for Gertrude, I've got um, a, a Bible verse for you, or some verses. It says here in 1 Thessalonians 5, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good and reject every kind of evil. And may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who called you is faithful and he will do it. Bless you. Young Philip, are you ready? Do you believe in God, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? I do. Do you repent of your sins and put your life into God's hands? I do. Do you promise with God's help to follow him all the days of your life? I will. And are you willing, with God's help, to follow the path of Christian service wherever that might lead you? Yeah. On your profession of faith and repentance towards God, we now baptise you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> got a scripture for Phil and it's in Colossians 3 and it says this since then you have been raised with Christ set your heart on things above where Christ is Christ is seated at the right hand of God set your mind on things above not on earthly things for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God when Christ who is your life appears then you you also will appear with him in glory Thank you.